Well, we are going to go ahead and get started. And uh, here's the the website we're going to work on. And uh, basically, what happens is when I go go to places like probably a lot of web developers, I you know sneak around on people's websites and think, huh, how would I have done that differently, or what did they do, or you know whatever. So we were recently in Boise, Idaho, taking a quick trip as a family, and went to this coffee shop on a recommendation it was great so um i really enjoyed the coffee in fact we bought one of these bags down here let's see which one did i buy well we had this one that was excellent and i think we bought this one right here yeah this burundi but anyhow so if you're into coffee and you ever happen to be in this area i would totally recommend stopping by they were awesome to talk to and coffee's awesome so what we're going to do is just work on building out the site. And this is what I typically did when I was first learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's just I go to a place, find their website, try to make it myself. Or I just kind of poke around on the internet until I found something. But um, anyhow, that's what we're going to work on today and just try to recreate this in Astro. So there's some things we can focus on. We can focus on the basic layout of this, which we might do. Um, maybe just do the basic layout because it's not too difficult. And then we've also got the sidebar if we want to kind of work on some JavaScript. There's also some JavaScript-y type stuff here where you can scroll and then kind of zoom stuff down. But anyhow, that's just a couple things we can think through here. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. And I just got warp open over this way. So let's say, um, let's use pmpm create astro at latest. And we'll call this something like pine coffee supply. Uh, now I should note that I'm not gonna post the final code here just because or maybe I'll strip out the the fonts and the, the images but um, just because I don't want to get into copyright trouble here but we'll use an empty project I am excited about Astro 3.0 I've got some ideas for doing stuff on view transitions and other things like that I just haven't gotten around to them yet um, but hopefully soon And let me know if you can hear me. I'm assuming everybody can hear uh, that is here, but um, yeah, let me know. I do want to go ahead and while I'm over here, let's go ahead and look up Astro Tailwind. I think it's just Tailwind Add. Oh, I'm not sure what this is. Must be from um, Search Console or something. But um, installation isn't it just Astro Add. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes, go ahead and install those. And if you're watching this morning, where are you watching from? I'd love, I would love to know that. Uh, TypeScript? Uh, sure, that's fine. That's fine as well. Okay. Uh, let's pmpm add just pim pim add astro add and we'll just use tailwind I think this time just to kind of keep things as simple as possible awesome glad you can hear welcome yes go ahead and add that that's one of the things I love about astro is the CLI interactions are so awesome um, astro will minimate that's fine that's fine okay uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up. And I did, like, just in the two minutes before this, I went ahead and just downloaded the images just so you didn't have to sit around and watch me do that. Let me get over here. Um, so I've got all those. Basically, all I did was open up the network tab and, first of all, grab images and just refresh and scroll the whole page. And then, basically, all the images that came in, I just grabbed like this and right-clicked and hit saved. <laughs> so I did that. And I also grabbed the font um, right here. I think... The work sans and poppins are both Google fonts, so if we need those, we can grab those. But this isn't, so far as I know. So uh, I basically refreshed it, grabbed this right here, and just opened it. And so obviously, like I don't own this font, so I'm not going to use this in production anywhere. But I'm trying to duplicate this site, so I figured that would be helpful. So that's what we're going to do. Let me go ahead and just get stuff set up over here, um, and make sure I've got everything up and running, and then I'll switch back over. See, let me grab, let's just grab all this. Uh, 
All right. Sri Lanka. That's, that's great. I've got some really good friends from Sri Lanka. Hey, great. Kedar, I don't know if that's how you say your name, but um, I'm glad they've been a help to you. All right, so here we are. Um, I guess the other thing I should do is go ahead and I think maybe, yeah, let's just go ahead and use the assets. And I'm going to add the images inside of here. So let me do that as well. I don't know exactly what my finder will show if I open it, so I'm just going <laughs> to close it down for two seconds. All right. There we go. So let's jump back over here. I'm just going to grab all the images I found quickly and just drop them in right here. Now for the font, um, see, I'm just going to put this in my public directory here. All right, so that should work. Let me come over to the pages directory index right here, and uh, we can grab several things here. But start with just to make sure this is working, we'll say pine or something like that, and then let me just pmpm run dev from over here, unless my computer wants to sit around and think about it. <laughs> uh, full stack complex e-commerce using Astro. Maybe um, Astro Friday, that's right. Um, yeah, maybe I would love to. I think, you know, I, I do this basically in my spare time from 5 to 8 a.m. most of the time. So that's my, my channel time and all my coding time. So, um, so all that to say, it kind of just depends what kind of time I have. Because a, a course like that, at least the way I'd want to do it, would take me like three months probably to do and <laughs> prepare. So I'd love to do that, but um, I can't always put the time into it. Okay, so here we go. We got Pine working over this way. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and just kind of think through what we want to do. Maybe let's grab some of this data here. And I'm just going to place, let's see if. If I can get this without, I was going to say, let's, let's add maybe a content collection. Let's just jump straight in content. And then here we'll have like coffees and I'll just have, I'm not sure. I guess I can call these whatever. So let's just call this by the origin. So we'll say Kenyan since this is Kenya. And then what I'll do is Let's just add everything up here. So maybe I'll yeah, we'll just have origin, be Kenya. Um, yeah, I think that'll work. Hey, Dante, we are live. Welcome. It's always a good day when Dante makes it to the stream. So good to see you. So for those of you just joining, we are basically just recreating a coffee website because this is what I do in my spare time. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, so I'll say 2250. And I think that's probably all I need. I guess image as well. Yeah, let's, let's do this. I'll do image. Yeah, let's just do image source. And we'll point this to assets. I don't know what it'll be. We'll figure it out. Image. All oh, will just be coffee bag like this. Okay, so I think we'll do it like that. And then let's just duplicate this and do the same thing down this way. Arrived at the right time, that's right. So if you haven't joined my streams before, basically I just, I, I never try to like plan stuff out ahead of time, which might sound like a negative, but I mean it as a positive, which is just that like I, I try to code live and that's the whole point of it. And I think that does two things. One is it helps me kind of figure out what I actually know and what I don't know. And the other thing is I think it helps you hopefully track my thinking and maybe be able to be a help to me as well. All right, last one down here. Uh, this is Columbia. This one was really good. I had this the other day as well. I guess I should probably capitalize this. 
grab both of these, oops, and just change this to guava, banana. Okay. Close enough, and then let's come inside here and we'll do a content or config.ts, Astro Content Collections. Um, just so I don't have to remember how to type this out, because there we go. All right, so we are going to call this, let's close this side bar down. I don't have to add this. This isn't experimental anymore, I don't think, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Um, although I do want to grab Z from here as well. We'll call this coffee. Coffees. All right. Um, so this will be, and I guess we could call this content or what is it type I think it's data I think is what it's called all right let's see the object and let's just go ahead and grab this right here and we'll drop this in here so this will give us type checking and all this kind of stuff which is nice plus it allows us to loop through this data as we need so see that string All right, so this can be the same. This should be a number. This should be the same, and this should be the same. Uh, let's see, I'm curious, could you put some of the content, how you render on the site from collections? Yeah, so I'm, you can if you want to. It's the same as like using a blog. You would just grab the actual rendered data, and put it in there. So I probably won't do that here just because there's not anything to that I need to render. But I'm trying to find something for you here. When you loop through it here, you'd grab the content, which you get from entry.render. So you'd grab the entry and then render it. So this is a method that will take all the markdown or MTX or whatever it is and render it basically to HTML. And then you would just drop that in as a component. Um, so you can render whole pages as well like this. And that's all they're doing here is this would be all the stuff below the front matter in that markdown document. So hopefully that's a help. Uh, let's come back over here. Unsupported type. What does that mean? Config.ts. Not sure what that's about. Let's just restart the server. Let's see if I can get that to work. Okay, um, back over this way. What we want to do is render out this stuff, this this content collection. Okay. The blog collection, yeah. Oh. There we go. Yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, so what we want to do is render all this collection stuff out. So let's come into... Let's just kill all these things. We'll eventually have to get around to getting those to work. But up top here, let's just const. Um, again, I'm just going to grab it over here. It's like get collections or something. So let's just get collections. And then we'll say all coffees. Oops, like that. Oh, wait, get collections and then we'll grab our coffees. So I should be able to get all these over here. Number, that doesn't match. You're right, because I had these as prices. So like this, oops. There we go. Uh, that's server-side console, so let's come back over here. All right, so this is what we're getting back for each of these then. We're getting the ID, which is the name of the file, the slug, which by default is just the name of the file without the extension, the body, which is anything below the markdown, 
uh, front matter, which we don't have anything there, the collection it's in, and then the data, which is basically the front matter. This is that render uh, method, Dante, where you would actually render the content uh, out below. Okay, so over this way then, uh, let's go ahead and uh, I don't think we need this anymore, so let's close that down. Uh, let's render out this stuff. So uh, now let's actually get to styling this. Um, let's see, so we'll have this section over here. I probably need to go ahead and add that font as well. So let's come into, where's my CSS? Do I not have any CSS yet? I don't think so. Um, so let's come inside here. We'll do style, styles, and then we'll do main.css or something. Um, now, Tailwind should already be pulling all this stuff in. And I've got this Tailwind config as well. But here, what I want to do is um, just add a font face. So we're going to call this whatever this thing is called. So we'll call it Brandy. How about that? And then see this is just gonna be the root of my directory yeah because it's the root of the server here so this will just be brandy let's come up just so I can not have to type all this like that okay and then I should be able to get rid of this right here I think like that and then was it like type or something? I don't remember how to do this. Font face. Format, that's right. Okay, that works. And then I should be able to just pull this in here in my Tailwind config. Brandy, something like that. Yeah. Let's see. Isn't this isn't this like sans? I think. Maybe this does need to go up. That should work. Okay. Hmm. Make sure I'm doing this right. Gotta pull that in somewhere, okay. <laughs> Always start by importing your CSS so you can actually use it. Import, styles, main CSS. Okay, there we go. Network, there we go. So here's how you can tell it's being pulled in here. There's the size, um, you, you know, it's actually working. So if this was installed locally on my machine, you could also add the local um, I don't know what that would be called, declaration or whatever, and that you would just point it to Brandy Bold as well, and that way if somebody had it on their machine, it would use that instead of downloading it. Um, so I've done a video on this in the past because I couldn't figure it out once. So <laughs> there you go. All right, so now that we've got that, let's actually style this stuff up. And typically what I would do, like I don't know how much time I'm going to have this morning, so I'm just kind of taking my time setting this thing up. So we might, 
I'll, I'll probably end up either just kind of throwing something together quickly this morning and kind of working through content collections and that kind of stuff, or we'll just halfway do it and finish it off tomorrow or the next day. Um, but typically what I would do is pass these to some kind of heading component um, just so that I can control it somewhere. Um, if I really went all in, I would use something like tail and merge. Um, at some point though, I need to actually build something out here. So <laughs> let's do um, components and I'll do heading to Astro. And then I would take in here a few things. So I take in the tag type or whatever, uh, the size, what else do I need? To t uh, I probably would just slot that size, any classes, something like that. And I would take these all from uh, Astro. Come on, astro.props. And then just to see this working, let's come over here. And here we're gonna pull in the heading. VS Code doesn't wanna work, so let's reload it. I feel like that's been happening a lot recently, so. All right, so inside here, um, oh, there it is, tag type, size, classes. Okay, so let's grab all these like this and drop these in here. All right, so we'll say like H1 size, so typically what I would do is set this as like H1 size as an H something as well. That way I can pick semantically and the size way what I want. And I could just say like background blue 400 or something random. Okay, so we're gonna pass all those in. And I would also, because we're gonna just slot this, I would come inside here and say like, I am a heading or something. All right, so then over here, what we're gonna do is grab the tag type and I'm going to set the I guess we could just do tag as tag type I think you still have to do this and then basically you can wrap this tag like this and slot everything else in here there you go so I'm heading now what we're going to do is declare Um, I, I don't know, I guess options. And here all we're gonna want is an H1, et cetera, et cetera. So <laughs> let's do this several times and then we'll grab these and do one to six. Um, so what I'm saying is that these are the different options I have for, for both of these. So. Now we can say props equals, and we're just gonna set the tag type to one of the options. We're gonna set the size to one of the options. And we're gonna set the classes to string. All right, so now these are all typed as these individual things. And now I can come inside here. We can probably also spread a rest, just in case we need to add in like anything here. And I'll show you what this does in a second. For now, uh, we've got the tag type being already piped into here as H1, H2, H3, whatever. Um, what else do we have? Uh, the size. So what I will probably do, oh, you know what? This is tailwind, <laughs> so I can't do this. So let's call this uh, like tag options. And then we'll call this size options. And what I'll probably do is have like text I don't know, it's like 4XL. And then we'll just go down from here and we'll do the same thing. So let's copy this, paste this a bunch of times. Uh, and we'll text pastry it again. And we should probably have done that differently. <laughs> so this one we'll do, I guess, let's do large, extra large, two, Three, I'm just gonna manually do it this at this point, four and five or something like that. Okay, so that should work. And then pass this here. Oops, and then uh, we'll have several, maybe we should do this too. Let's do merge. 
Um, oops. Pop that in there. Basically, what this allows you to do, I've been meaning to do a video on this, but I haven't yet. You can see that you can basically import it, and then you basically pass it your defaults, and then, oops, and then any new things you want, and it combines them in a way. So it'll get rid of duplicates and use basically what you pass to override stuff. Um, let's jump over here, see if they have better examples. No, that's pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> so. so let's import this up top here. And I'll show you how this works in a second. I guess we'll just call this like final classes or something. And then we'll merge this taking our defaults. So for instance, like for pretty much all these, I guess, I guess we could also add this. Um, as another option here. So we could say bolded is optional it's boolean and then by default we could set this to uh, true then we'll come in here and have this as uh, oh, i don't need to copy these but i don't even know what i'd want here i guess like font sans which that was a serif font anyhow right <laughs> so i'm not sure why i called it sans but so let's come over here maybe and change this to sans serif. Um, what else do I have in here that I would want for my heading? I don't really know. So let's just leave that alone and then we'll pass in basically our classes um, here. And then what we could do is check if bolded is true. Like this, if it is, then we'll pass in font bold. Otherwise, we'll pass in nothing, I guess. I think that should work. Okay, so we got the classes pulled in there. We just need to add these. And here is our final classes. The rest, the size here should be uh, here as well. So that will be one of these options up here. Bullet true rest. I think all that's in there. Okay, so let's actually use this. So that means I should be able to come in just inside here. So you can see I'm getting some type safety. I could just pick like 3XL. Oh, come on. <laughs> Help me out. I think I did that right. Nothing. Um, what's this giving me? Oh, you know what? Something's happening over here. Oh, there we go. I saw something happen. Let's get rid of this for now. Okay. So, yeah, there we go. So, all that stuff's coming through. So, we've got Paul and Seraph. Background blue, because I passed in these extra classes. Text 3XL, font bold. So I could come in here and say font or bolded and set this to false. And now it's not bold. But hopefully that makes sense what we're doing. Um, now the point of doing it this way is now I've got this heading component that I can pass in all the data I might need and stay super consistent. And if I want to go ahead and change like what sizes things refer to or whatever I can do that now the other thing you could do is point these to some kind of like inside here since we're using tailwind um, you could point these to some kind of objects that would then do this way maybe that would be smarter um, so in other words you do something more like this and each of these would point Let's see if I can grab these like this um, yeah, so these would be like H1 or whatever, H2, H3, H4. Um, yeah, so like this, except I guess <laughs> I basically want to reverse all these. So 
like this, and then you go down from here. So now that we're just manually typing things, let's just do it, I guess. So like this, and then you'd pass these to size options here, and the size options would basically drop those classes, and that's probably what I would do, honestly. So be, by referencing something, <clears throat> like an H2 or whatever, um, yeah, I think that should work, okay. So then what I would do is take the value So these should all be, oh, that works. So yeah, so then what I want is the size. I want my size options, oops. And I take my size off of that. So because this is a type, I think there's a couple ways you can do this, but one I could do as const. And I think if I make this an actual object, I think that would still work. Yeah, so I'm getting 4XL here. So basically, I, I'm i not going to declare this as a type. Instead, I'm going to just have this as an, uh, as an, yeah, I think that works. Yeah, it's a type of size option. So that way I can use this as type of size options. So I can you know, just use this as an object, but, but as saying as const, what I'm basically saying is that this is a read only type where I'm gonna use these keys to then give me the values here. So like here I'm getting four Excel. The advantage of doing this way is string is a sizable. So what's going on here? Maybe I should do type of key of, I guess. Key of type of, I always forget how that works. Yeah, there we go, okay. So what I'm basically saying is that it has to be one of these. And that way I can come in here and just change this any at any point. So like right now I'm using this 5XL one, but I could come in here and change it to like 7XL. And then this right here is what I'm pointing everything to. So all throughout my project, I'll just be saying I want H1 or H3 or H whatever. So I've got one place to basically change that and it will update my entire site. So that's probably what I would do, but all right, so now that I'm spending all this time setting this stuff up, we've yet to actually build anything, but hopefully that's <laughs> at least halfway interesting. This is how I would set up something like this. Um, you could also, for these kind of like initial classes, there's another library that I've used before that I really, really like. Um, why can't I just use the normal H1 like and pass it in as a tag down here? I'm assuming that's what you're saying. Um, because it basically has to run it through this props, and so it doesn't know what type it is and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's what you have to do, unless this has changed. Assuming that's what you're even asking about. Let's check. Maybe it's changed. Because I'd asked about it in the... Yeah, so it's just going to pass it as an actual tag of tag type. Because you, this is just HTML, and you can make up any tags you want, <laughs> you... Um, I think it would just pass along that tag. Whereas here, I'm basically saying, give me the tag and put it in this separate variable. That's what I'm gonna to use to, to tag it out. And for whatever reason, this gets around that. So I don't know if they came up with this because people were wanting to do exactly this kind of thing, but hopefully that's what you're asking. All right, um, so hopefully that was interesting, at least how we set that up. We've yet to really do a whole lot, so maybe we should get around to that at some point. <laughs> so let's come over here. And let's grab these. Um, let's reconsole log these just to remember what we're getting. So this is what we're getting from all our different coffees we have. So we've got, um, let's see. I'm getting pinged on my, my watch here. Um, so what we wanna do is grab the origin, the title, all this kind of stuff and output it into the DOM. Um, so let me go ahead and, uh, I'm trying to turn my watch to, sleep mode because it just killed me. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and output these somewhere. Um, this heading right here, we won't worry about a whole lot, but let's go ahead and take our coffees, all coffees, what's that called? All coffees dot map, and we'll take our coffee and we'll just send it to a new component we're gonna have that we'll call 
coffee card or something. And here we'll just spread in the coffee. All right, this doesn't exist yet, so if we save it, it will not like us. Card.astro. You could, of course, do this with JSX or something like that if you prefer. Um, but I can grab this. And let's see, I made a work, made work out of that. Let's do that. Pull this in here. I don't know that we actually need to declare these because we should be able to get along pulling the type from the actual collection. But uh, either way, it will allow us to grab origin, title, price, image, SRC, image all. Okay from astro.props. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this in here. That should import it up top somewhere right here, yeah. So let's at least organize the sums of styles. Components. Uh, Something's happening here. Okay, it's okay. It'll be just fine. How about, how's that? Okay. So now I should be able to come in here, and this will probably be a, an article type, just because it'll be a, kind of a list of different cards. Uh, let's get back to the actual site we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so right here, I should probably also have some kind of link here, but I'm going to use, I guess I'll just use the slug, which is by default the name of the file. The content collection file so we'll just do that um so we'll have two sections in here for now let's just make sure we're actually getting what we think we are here so let me output like origin right here so there we go except this needs to be the actual origin i'm passing in hmm. um let's get rid of this and see if it helps Did I not save this? Can't I just pass in? Astro.props, let's see what we're getting over here. Server side. Let's get rid of this console log. Here we go. ID slug. Oh, it's <laughs> so all this stuff I need to pull from the data. Um, so since we want the slug and the data, maybe, and then I can say const all this stuff from the data. Now, there we go. Okay, <laughs> so we can pull that stuff in. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up and add Burundi here. And the Kenyan one should be the same, should be capitalized. All right, so now we're actually getting what we think we are over here, over this way, and I think all these should be already typed now. Okay. So let's go ahead and type these then. Uh, so the slug will be a string, and then the data will be an object. Um, yeah, that should work. And then this will be all the stuff already from my config. Title string. Okay, so it is actually pulling all this stuff in. All right, cool. Um, let's come over here then and extract this because we don't need this anymore. But um, so we will go ahead and add it here. And it's fairly versatile, so now we should be able to pull this stuff in and drop in like uh, the title or whatever right here. There we go. Oops. And these should definitely not be H1s. These should probably be H3s. 
if I come over here, so we'd have, oops, um, probably some kind of like unlabeled section over here, which probably means we should also come into my heading. Just gonna keep adding stuff over here. Um, be like visible. And then what we do is grab visible, and set this to true by default. If I can get it to work. <laughs> and then what we'll do is copy this down and say, oops, if this is visible, like that. If it's true, then we'll do nothing. Otherwise, we'll do uh, SR only. So that means we should be able to come over here and set a section. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say section. Uh, that's fine. And then we'll take our heading here. And we'll say like uh, coffees for sale or something. So this should yell because we haven't yet given it a tag or anything. And those are required. So this will be H2 for the section. Um, so the only thing required classes. I guess I need to give it a size as well. Um, it doesn't super matter because it's not going to be visible. But here we go right here. And now all I have to do is pass visible and make this false. And now I can't see it, but it is here. So it'll be kind of the title for this whole section. I could also pass along an ID. So we could call these like coffees for sale or something. And you see how this gets passed on. The reason that's happening is because of this rest prop. Um, this rest prop basically says anything else that can go with here, go ahead and send, give me that as well. And while we're at it, since we're taking our time, um, we could also come in here and grab, um, what am I wanting? <laughs> uh, HTML props or something like that. Um, what do they call that here? TypeScript. Okay, yeah, here. So I can import this and then I, I can basically cross tell it what kind of Mm-hmm. Oops. What is, what's going on here? Polymorphic type. Build components that can render different HTML. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Full type safety. This is for length. It can be either button. Okay. Man, I like that. Let's do that. Um, so let's grab all this. Put it in here. Oops. Interesting. So you can pass in. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that. So. Oops. So this is going to be here. Oops. Like this. And would I just set all the rest of these in here? Tag, and then I pass in the tag here. Okay, so you can't actually do it like that. You just have to declare it in this way, I guess. Huh. Um, I pass in the rest of the props there. Okay. Can I do this? Um, oops, like that. And then basically this tag type. We're just figuring this thing out live because I haven't used this before, but that's interesting. So I should be able to then pass in this tag type here. All the rest of these. Right. 
maybe I can just, yeah, I should be able to just pull these out here. Yeah, so let's just do that. Oops. Right, and then these should be, no. <laughs> what am I doing wrong here? Now I'm just getting stuck in the weeds, so. Uh, anyhow, that, that seems super interesting. I need to come back and figure that out, but I don't know that I want to waste your guys' time with this, but um, might be worth paying attention to. Well, it might be another video I do just so I can take some time to figure that out. Okay, back to what we were actually supposed to be doing, um, which is to build this thing out. So now that I kill my server, <laughs> let's get this thing back up and running. What were we doing? Sorry for all the uh, ADHD or whatever is going on, going on over here. Um, let's pull this in here. Okay. So let's actually collection contains entries. It's configured as a data collection. Okay. We can put this as content. That's fine. I forget the official distinction between this two, but evidently that wasn't right. All right. Let's actually get this thing styled. Um, <laughs> so the thing we came to do. So uh, we've gone ahead and passed in this ID right here. I should be able to spread this in. I think that's what we came over to do is to show you how to spread in the rest of these things. Um, for now, I'll just do any, although you could do the HTML type props. That's what I think I was trying to show you. Um, but I think what we want to do is spread this in like this. Maybe. I don't exactly remember how I usually do this. That doesn't seem right. Well, I don't remember right now. So for right now, we're just going to leave that alone and set this as any. Okay. Um, but what I want to do is point the section to ARIA labeled by. And we'll point this to coffee for sale. I think you do that. Point to that. Uh, no, I think you just leave it like this. Okay. And the reason you would do that is so you could come over here and let's turn on these accessibility things. So now you see that I've got a region called coffees for sale and, it, and it's ID'd by this right here. Um, so I think if I change this to whatever, now it says coffees for saddle. Not like, why is it saying that? Well, it's using this ID to basically say this, whatever's in this heading component, this is what labels this section. So now we know what this section's for, then all these are the articles within this section. So that's why you would do that, um, is point these two things to each other. All right. Um, <laughs> I've entered the dark corners of types. I'll wait for the, by the entrance. Yeah, I don't super understand TypeScript. I'm definitely learning it right now, but... Um, I don't know that you should learn stuff live that live in front of people. <laughs> so just because I don't want to take your guys' time up with me trying to read documentation. But um, so now we've got this section. It's got this heading that's hidden because we've set visible to false. Now I'm looping through all these articles below, and that's the advantage of setting up these regions like this. So hopefully that makes sense why we did it that way. Uh, but now to the actual doing of the thing. Let's come over here and um, let's put these next to each other so I can switch between them. Um, so right here, we've got this heading. We're gonna have two sections right here and right here. And as these things pull apart, eventually they will be capped to a certain width, which we'll probably just use a container for um, in Tailwind. Uh, but the article itself, uh, I do need to have a couple of things. So we'll have a class here. We'll have flex, uh, flex wrap. Let's see, I'm assuming these wrap down and maybe it wrap reverses. So wrap reverse. All right, so in other words, the image will be on the right when it's large, and then it will wrap up top um, when it's when it's big. Okay, um, what else do I have here? How did I kill this thing already? You haven't passed in required. The rest is missing. Oh, because I came here and tried to fix this. That's why. Okay, so for now, we're just going to leave that alone. Come back here. Okay, we're good. Um, title uh, is inside here. Below this, we'll have from whatever this is. Um, so what will be our price? 
Um, so let's go ahead and get it in first, and then we'll, we'll do something else. But all this will be in its own section either way. So this will just be in the div, and then we'll have the image over here, which we'll do in a second. Um, so right here will be our price, right? Now this is a type of number. So if I add this in here, it should show, but it's just a number type. What I want to do is take this and convert it to currency. So let's go ahead and come over here. And how should I do this? Let's just do like a utils.ts file for now. And here we're going to export uh, convert number to USD. This will take in a number. And then what we're going to do, and I just have to type this since I'm using TypeScript, but uh, we'll take the num dot to locale string and come on. Uh, I guess I'd want to eat in US since I'm going to be doing currency. Come on. <laughs> Can't type. Uh, type currency. How do I do this? Now let's do number. There we go. Okay, so style is currency. And then currency is USD. So this should just... Yeah, so what we're going to do is take this and just immediately export it back and then grab this here and reload the window since VS Code doesn't want to work again. I exported that, didn't I? Okay. Let's import this from utils.ts. Now I should be able to come in here and have this and pass in my price. Okay, so I did all that so that this can now just read as a price. Um, so we can come over here and change this to like, uh, I don't know, is there like an ES or something? I think Korea is like KO. Maybe. Oh, I killed it. <laughs> Let's come back over here and just grab one from the actual docs. There we go. So I should be able to come in here now. And you can see how this changed it. This, um, why is this blue? Oh, yeah, I had to pass that in, but it changes the currency type. Back to USD. Okay. So now we're passing that in as a true number. And then we're converting it to a string right here. And this needs to say from, oops, from that. Yeah. All right, now, um, this needs to have, I don't know, we're going to do like text extra large maybe. Um, let's also set on the entire body here. You know, if this was more than one page, I'd have this as separate routes here. But let's have a font serif. So I don't have to keep declaring this everywhere. Um, and font bold as well. Well, yeah, I guess let's go ahead and do that because most of the font is this and it's all bold. Let's also get rid of these blue values right here because we don't need those. Okay, um, then what we're gonna do is like, maybe something like that, XL, that seems about right. Let's go ahead and check. Uh, this right here. What kind of computed styles do we have? Is this spaced out at all? Line, what am I looking for? Letter spacing, I don't see anything here. Okay, so I guess we just leave that alone then. Okay, so we'll do something like that. And then as it gets larger, we need to pump that up quite a bit. The right thing. This is not. Is this the right thing? Also not. Okay, so 
this whole time we've been working with a font that's not even what we need. Um, so let's come back over to Tailwind. Okay, Serif, that's what it's called. Um, yeah, so it's on like small screen sizes, but just like 2XL, maybe medium, text, 4XL or something. Okay, larger. I don't know. I mean, we're just kind of guessing anyhow, right? Oops. It seems close to right. This needs to be capitalized. Let's also then come into our heading component. And this is the advantage of setting it up this way is now I have to change this once instead of everywhere I declare it. Um, but this might be something like 7XL when, when I get to maybe a medium. We'll do text like 5XL, maybe even 4XL, small text 5XL. And that way it's smaller when it's smaller and it gets larger. And I'd say that's semi-close. Okay. Let's close that down. Come back over here. We're going to need some kind of classes is declared here. Need to make this optional. All this TypeScript stuff, sorry. Okay. So here we're going to do like max width of maybe like medium. I don't know. I just want it to wrap. Um, could I do that? I think so. Okay. Um, what else do we have down here? We're going to do text center. In fact, we should do it. Well, I guess that's the only text we have. Something like that. And then here we're going to do items center. No, oh, justify center to keep everything in the middle to start with like this. Other thing here is I would probably set this up as a grid with a gap of like four. I don't know, grab gap of two, small gap of four. Um, these obviously themselves need to be spaced out as well, but I would do that over here where I loop through them all. I'd surround these all with like a grid gap, I don't know, six. And then maybe we'd go small gap eight and large gap 12 or something. That would space these things out this way as we need to, maybe even more than that. And then here they'd be spaced out quite a bit. And obviously I need to change other things about those, but let's go ahead now and grab our images. And we'll have to kind of figure out what else we're gonna do here, but hopefully this is you don't mind the slow here because it's hard to explain a lot with any kind of accuracy going too fast. Okay, so this is, assets is still experimental. I don't think I remember that. For some reason I was thinking that was live. Maybe they're saving that for 3.0. So let's come over here to our Astro config and we're gonna add in this experimental declaration uh, this should automatically happen, right? Yeah, okay, so I need to just restart this. And then I should be able to pull that in. Assets. Okay, so we just add this in. I do need to give it some kind of width. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, I don't know if this is super helpful to anyone, but <laughs> I'll go ahead and add that in there. Um, what else do we need? Yeah. So now I should be able to come in here and just grab my image. I don't know why that's not working. Like this. I don't know. Anyhow, we've got in here my SRC 
image src. There we go. My alt is my image alt. Uh, width, I think I do need to give this some kind of number. So let's do like 300 to start with. I think that's everything I have to pass in. Let's see. I was like, oh man, that looks perfect. It's their actual site. <laughs> All right, so back over here. Image is inside your SRC folder. Probably meant to import it instead. Oh yeah, I do have to import those images. Let's see, how would I do that? Oh yeah, and they're not actual images yet, are they? So I think they're just like stubbed out nothing right now. Okay, yeah, so. So here I'd want to come into my asset. Okay, so now what I don't recall is if I pull this from where it's being rendered or if I pull this from uh, the spot right here. So let's let's just try. So we'll say it's assets. And then I think I just named these coffee, Burundi, coffee, whatever. Okay. What I want is the title here. Okay, there we go. So these are PNGs. So let's grab, I guess we probably need to do this on all these so that it doesn't yell at us. Oh, I did guava for some reason, okay. Um, Kenyan, let's do the same thing. right yeah okay so let's see what happens if we try to pull these in now I think it's still going to yell at us because I need to actually maybe import those well another um, no it died okay See, there is markdown here. You can do it in a markdown component. Let me just, let me just reference it like that. But here I want it as part of the content collections. I just don't remember how to do this. Get out of here. Yeah, I could put them in the public, but then uh, Astro won't process them so I was trying to use the content or the assets collection so I mean you could definitely do that and maybe that's what we'll end up doing here but what I want to do is import this image SRC maybe I can just I don't remember how I would do this because I can't can I just import it like this maybe image uh, I don't know we'll call it SRC from image src. Can I do that? Let's see, can I can I do it like this? <laughs> I don't think so. How would I do this? I'm sure if you if you've worked with image things like this, this there's probably something you're supposed to do here, but I don't know what this would be. So we might just forget the assets collections then for now. Although that's not yelling anymore. Let's see how much it will, if, that, if that's the way you're supposed to do it. Because I'm importing it from the section. Expected string. So yeah, Dante, it is uh, it is easier to reference them from the public. The problem is that I want to make Astro like process them and convert them to like a WebP image and stuff like that. And if you, they're in the public directory, Astro won't touch them. Uh, I mean, I can just pull it in raw, but the whole point is I want to to actually import them and then process them that way. Let's just really quick check my oops.
I'll look one more time. I mean, this got this has got to be a very normal thing to do to pass in an image as a prop. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's right. You have to pass in the image like this. You blog, you get like this image, post the data dot cover. That's right. Okay. So config. I knew there was a way to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, it is very early as far as Astro being a little rough with the images. It is very early for them um, with images. So they intentionally said they didn't want to like let scope creep come in too much at the beginning. So anyhow. But I mean, they need to have actual like responsive images and that kind of thing, which I think would be their next come iteration of the, the whole thing. But I guess there's a lot of complexity there, which, you know, I wouldn't know. So. Oh, what's this doing? Okay. Anyhow, back to what we were doing, which is right here. Let's grab this and let's see, don't you have to pass in? Yeah, okay. So you gotta pass this in as an image and then process it like this. I think all the rest of that works. Okay. So now that's fine, we can leave it like that. I should be able to pull on The image like that. Okay, so this will look into the blog. Relative to the current folder. Okay, so the actual folder they're in. Okay, so let's open up back up the sidebar here and just kind of clip through these. So I would be coming up out of here, going up another level into assets. Just double check this is the case. I guess it's not gonna give me autocomplete, that's fine. In which case, let's just try it. All right, so back over here. We don't need to do that. So the Kenya doesn't exist. Okay, so yeah, I think it's working now. So now we just come in here. And Dante, I'll show you the difference here once we get this up. Uh, same thing here, okay. So come on. Oh, none of these like it. Let's just double check. That is not something with just reloading these. Coming up a level. Coming up another level, going to assets, images. Oh, idiot. All right, <laughs> so let's go images here. Oops. Yeah. Kenyon. A lot of work just to get images to work, but. Same thing here. Uh, I spelled this one differently. Anyhow, let's just go ahead and change this to Columbia. Anyhow. And making work out of this. Columbia. Come on. Show up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, so the reason we did that <laughs> is because uh, if I come back over here, these now are minimized and a bunch of other cool stuff. So let me come over this way and oops, close down the sidebar over here. Let's look at our images. And now you'll notice even though they're PNGs, they're gonna come in here as WebPs. And I can also actually set these formats to something else if I want to. So I can set the format here uh, to like AVIF 
and it will actually reprocess these as AVIS. So these are down to 6.4 kilobytes. Let's see if I didn't have this, what were they before? 6.3, so basically about the same. So not a huge difference here. And technically WebP is probably better supported. But like if I came back here and said I want this to be PNG, which is the default to start with, they're massive. You know, they're 10 times as large. So now it's actually processing these the exact size I need them. Um, and just, you know, way more performant and doing all that work for me and just dropping it in here, converting it. So anyhow, that's that's the, the reason you go through all that oddness. Um, let's see. What is it yelling at? I think this is, it thinks this is a remote image, which means I also need a height. So I think the way this works is it sets a a size based on, so three to 400. So let's set this at 400. It sets an aspect ratio based on the height and the width. It's not actually setting the height and the width like in your final build or whatever. All right, um, let's see. I have a bunch of random comments over here. Uh, like Astro more than views felt or other. I don't necessarily like it more. I just think I build mostly static sites. So um, I like the simplicity of Astro and like the progressive complexity where you can get more complex if you need to. Um, clunky images. Yeah, I think I'm hopeful the images thing will get better, but they used to have a like an image integration and this is much better than that in my, my personal opinion. Hey, Austin Abdul, thanks for the kind, uh, kind words. Suggest topics that you use to make more tutorials. Uh, yeah, you're welcome to send me an email or um, just drop a comment on one of my videos. Honestly, like the channel has been about me learning and then sharing what I'm learning. So a lot of it just depends on what I want to learn. But if you give me something I want to learn, then sure. Hey, awesome. So glad you built your uh, portfolio blog, Mindy. Yeah, Matthew, thanks for feeling my pain. <laughs> now imagine if we had videos, Dante. Yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> way more colorful language, yeah. Wasn't there an integration? Yeah, there used to be an integration. Um, but now this is the kind of the new thing. And it's still experimental, but I think it's basically done at this point. They're just waiting to release it with 3.0. Unless they're planning on bringing in like an actual source set and multiple sizes and all that kind of stuff, which you know, like Next.js has and, and other frameworks have. So that's eventually where they're needing to go because right now this is still a single image that it's going to load for every single body, every single person, whether they're uh, coming from mobile or desktop. Okay, so back to what we were supposed to be doing. This is what we're supposed to be working on right here. Let's set this stuff. Um, once we get to like medium, let's set this to text uh, left. And that way they move over here. Let's also make sure that this is items center. Is that what I want? Content center, I think. Yeah, to push it in the middle. Um, and then here, we should do items center, which will combine these two, which I think this is kind of already set up that way anyhow. All right, so that basically sets it like that. When I get smaller, maybe we need to keep these here. Uh, so let's set this. Make it small sizes. Maybe I should just manually decide when these things wrap. That's not what I want to do. Uh, we'll just leave it for now, I think. Yeah, okay. So only thing I need to do then really is... Let's say that on small, this is justify between. And this will spread this stuff out as far as it can go, which means obviously I need to make some changes on the container, but that should work. Okay, uh, last thing is let's go ahead and add a little buy now button. Um, maybe before we do that though, let's come over to our Tailwind config and grab the container. And what are the things we can do? Center, sure. Padding, let's do like two rem, which I think needs to be a string. And now at least this should be centered when I put it inside of a container, which I will do right now. So let's add, yeah, let's just do it here. So I'll say class and this will be container. There we go. 
And now you shrink down like that on mobile. That'll work. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's some breakpoint things there we could fix. The other thing is I want to have like a cap on the width of this thing as well. So maybe we come in here and say max width. This is the container wrapper around all of these. Do something like 512, that doesn't seem big enough. 3XL. Something like that. And then we can also set these um, justify. I guess just align items center will do it both ways. And that way as they get bigger, right? Place item center, I think. Come on. Maybe I just need to, oh, these aren't the items. So this just needs to be MX Auto, I think. There we go, okay. So more or less, I'd say that's fairly close. Maybe a little bit larger, huh? Sure. Okay. That'll work. Um, let's work on this buy now button. And why am I getting yelled at here? Oh, it's because I'm getting all that stuff coming through. I mean, sue me. <laughs> let's go over here. I don't know that we really need this origin here. Slug in the data. I guess we're getting the whole content collection, but. Um. Let's come back over here and grab content collections, let's see. the typing here for this? I just don't remember what it's called. Okay, here we go. So let's go ahead and pull this in here. And I think what we're going to do is just grab the post. That's what we'll call it. Or Yeah, let's just call the post. or we can just call it a coffee. And we'll set this to type of coffee. And then I don't need to redeclare all this stuff. I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, like this. And then let's go ahead and pull this thing in here. And then here we're gonna pull in the coffee like this. And this will be the coffee.data. and coffees and I would have gotten type safety here anyhow like that okay nothing like making extra work for ourselves when they already gave us something for this so the other thing I need to do is come over here and pass this in as coffee is all that and I can just pass this in as coffee all right so now I'm passing the whole content collection over here that I'm getting this thing in the coffee card. I'm declaring it as this type of entry, which means I get all the type safety already, and then I can just extract out the things I want here and pop them in down here. Okay, let's come up with this button, and then we didn't really get a ton done today on the actual coding of this thing. Let's restart this. Um, but a lot of setup stuff, so maybe we'll come back tomorrow. I just don't want to 
I don't know. I might have a little bit more time. I don't know if anyone will come back to watch part two, so we should probably do more right now. Um, all right, so let's grab this by now. What is this font? Poppins. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab that. And my guess is this is like regular Poppins. Poppins normal. All right. As normal as it gets. Let's go Poppins. And we will go regular, I guess. 400 weight. Okay. So grab this here. Get out of here. Must have been from before. I'll grab all this and drop this into my index, I guess. Let's do this here. And then I guess we could call it Sans. And we'll come in here and call this Poppins. System UI, whatever. That's fine. Something like that. I don't know what that would be, but that'll work. Okay, let's come back over here then. Um, that'll work. Let's now come in and create a button component. See so right inside here. I guess I could probably call this a link component. So let's build out another one of these things. Kind of think through what we might need here. All right, so const. Um, we're gonna want a couple things at least. Um, right now, I think we're gonna have two buttons that I always saw on the home page. So we'd have this one right here and this right here. So we've got two different options. This might be an opportunity to pull in another library, but I've already taken a lot of time to set some of these things up. So maybe we just keep it simple. Um, I know this is gonna be a link component. So I'm gonna need an href. Uh, I will also need, I think I'm just gonna slot this as well. So like this. That way I can put an image in there or whatever I want. Um, I guess we could do style and point this to style, const style options. And here we could have like, yeah, rounded. And that would be a string of like rounded full or something like that. And we could also have like square. And this would be like, I don't know, border emerald 400 or something. Um, so that should work. And then I can come in here and maybe let's go ahead and open back up our heading and copy some of the same stuff we did before. So we're going to merge this stuff. See, let's get a little more space. Guess we'll just do this. Drop the same thing here. Probably do want to be able to pass in some extra classes if I want to. Style here, style options. Um, oops, don't need that, don't need that. Um, this should be as const. And then we'll have type props. Just to declare what these should be. href will be a string. Style will be a key of, type of, style options. Um, classes will be a string. Okay. I think we're set there. Then what I can do is have my classes point to my final classes. 
and this would be my href. That's at least a starting point. Okay, I think we should be good there. Let's go ahead and pull in on the card. Let's see, you're right. Cheer, let's uh, see, all these are gonna be the same, right? So this will be a link. Reload the window, because somehow VS Code <laughs> doesn't want to do anything anymore. If that's happening to you, let me know. I, that's been happening a lot recently. There's not a lot that makes me want to leave VS Code, but that is one of those things. Come on. Okay. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Um, so this will say by now. The href will point to the slug. So this would be coffee.slug. So this is the coffee we're getting in. The slug is just the name of the file, which, you know, by default will be the, like we would have some kind of link pointing to that. Obviously right now I don't have a page like that, but style needs to be either rounded or squared. Oops, so rounded. And then I don't need classes, so let's make sure we make those optional. It says by now, cool. Okay, so let's come back. The other thing I know I want in here is the font sans. Um, so like a font normal, right? Um, yeah, I think that'll work. Maybe rounded full. It's like border two. Okay, there we go. Um, aspect square, I think is how you say that. Yeah, there you go. Um, width is fit content. Um, let's do grid place items center. I think that'll work. Padding two. to um, yeah let's do max width like I don't know, 20 pixels just see what it does okay so it does wrap um, so let's just set an actual width here and let's just do something more like that, and then we'll set the height the same. And that way we ensure that it's a perfect circle and we can kind of play with these because for now at least they're gonna be the exact same no matter what, so. 70, sure that'll work. Um, and one thing I should probably do is grab the color here. So let me grab the color from this, which might just be, oh, no it is something, okay. So let's open back up our Tailwind config and we'll set the colors. Isn't there like a color or something? Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's set this to like pine dark or pine text. Okay, and then we should be able to set colors on everything here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, text text and just to make sure that it's working if we change this to something um, miserable like that okay there we go okay so now it's back that way should also be able to come into this link then and set the border um, would be pine text we gotta work um, I guess let's put that back. Okay. That'll work. Um, let's also have like a hover state where we maybe scale 105. There we go. Um, we could transition on the transform property. Let's make sure we got some kind of nice. Yeah. Okay. So let's do 
a ring four. And we'll do a ring. Don't we have like a green color or something? Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's grab this color here, that, and drop it in over here. So we're gonna have a text accent, text in an accent. So grab this pine accent, drop this bad boy in, ring accent, ring, what was that thing, pine accent? Look at that, okay. So that's what we'll do. And also say text, pine accent. And we're gonna do, nah, I don't like that. Um, so we'll just do this, let's see, ring offset two maybe. And we will only show this. Also two, yeah. Uh, let's only show this on focus visible. This on focus visible. Okay. Perfect. All right. That also means I can take the focus and set the outline color. Outline transparent on focus, I think. So I can get rid of the default and add that in myself. There we go. Okay. So that is set. Uh, let's just make sure this is in the middle over here. So place items center. Should put that in the middle. And then when I get larger, that could have gone better. <laughs> there we go. Um, so small will be start, which I think is the default. Yeah. Okay. Let's also make sure that this link text center is the same. So that even if I get larger, it stays in the center. All right. That's kind of more or less done. Um, somehow this is still the wrong font. So let's change the link font come on uh, so let's say font sans there we go um, what is like line height Ugh, what is that called I forget tail and line height I always forget what these things are called in actual leading that's right or letting I think it's leading See none. Maybe we say tight. Something like that. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> um, that only took a long time, but it was really more about setting up everything on the entire card. So it looks like this entire thing is actually, which would make sense. But we can do that in our own way. So I think what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and just alter this. So we've got rounded, we've got squared, we've got, maybe we could say like ghost or something. So this would be another type. And I'm gonna copy a lot of this, like this. Um, so aspect square, I don't need that. Porterpine text, I already should have that. I don't need any of this stuff. I don't want anything like that. Um, Let's hover text. Um, yeah, let's do text pine accent on hover. Transition the colors. Ring also two. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, maybe we throw a little rounded on here just to make it look slightly nicer. Outline transparent text center. We don't need that. We don't need that. Oops. Don't need that. Don't need that. Okay. So this ghost, now that I've got this coffee card, this header by making this a slot, I can actually just pull on a link component here as well. And, oops, oh, come on. Why isn't this thing closing itself off? So let's do the link like this. Okay. I can drop this title in here. And now I can pass the href to the same thing. So coffee.slug. I can point the style. And now I've got ghost as an option in my TypeScript here what's the matter for this thing oh that's not how you close a tag <laughs> so that would help 
All right, so now I can come over here and these should all transition and take me to the same place, which doesn't exist right now. I can also tab through these. I don't know if you like that more or less than the default. Yeah, look at that. All right. Maybe we transition on all. And we also on hover scale to 105. Scale 105, right? Hover, scale, 105. Should be the same exact thing, yeah. Huh. Not sure why that's not working, but... So, maybe maybe never mind on that. <laughs> Let's just go back to the colors. Now, I actually want to do the same thing here. Yeah. And then I think what I would do is on both of these. Oh, let's just do it on all three and then we'll go from there. So let me grab this here because what I want to do is surround the image in the same way. So that the image itself will be a link like that. And now the image itself will also be a link, except maybe this is where I add that back in. So let's, let's do all. And we'll also do hover scale 105, something like that. Yeah, so now it kind of pulls up there. Even though I think this isn't doing it because it's like inside that component, and the component isn't um, isn't scaling. But there we go. I mean, I think that's okay. Um. Let's see, other thing I might want to do here, since we're just kind of playing around with this anyhow, is maybe we increase both of these. So let's go like 600 and 800, and then we'll set the classes, because I don't know how big these things are. Well, maybe they are only about that big. Come on, help me out. I know you're... I just want to find I just want to find an image man all right no can I can I not select the image oh maybe this is like some kind of scaling okay 550 by 540. okay so set an aspect ratio automatically. And you know, height is 540, width is 550. So let's do the same thing here. Height is 540, width is 550. And Tailwind should automatically make sure that they won't break out of the frame. So it'll shrink it down as needed. And then it will obviously try to be as big as possible. Something like that. Sure, okay. That's not actually snapping. Hmm. So maybe the last thing I'll do is come in here and change this to a grid. And then what we'll do is switch the position of these things. So we'll have this be first. And well, I guess it doesn't super matter. Maybe let's keep this here and then we'll just change the order. All right, so what we'll do is say in this here we'll pass in the classes. We'll say order zero or I guess we could do that on this section. So we're gonna say order one, and then on small, we'll say order zero or auto. Order none. And then on small, or below small, okay, yeah, so they wrap below. 
Um, and then what we'll do is that all works. I get to right here to the small and here we'll set grid calls to two and that should stack them. So this also needs to be in the center. That makes auto, uh, although I think I could just set place items center and that should work. Yeah. I'll let the parent control it and then we pop out this way. Okay, so that works. Well, this is most about like laying out components and like how to think through Astro and I don't know. So hopefully that's been helpful. We didn't actually get to <laughs> tell a whole lot of actual work, um, but added our custom fonts, did some other stuff like that. So I hope that was a help. Um, let's see. Hey, Laban, welcome. Uh, let's see, a couple other questions here. Let's see, does Astro combine those two font links into one call? Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying there. Uh, how are you liking Tailwind Merge? Yeah, this is, I mean, I, I think it's interesting. Um, I mean, the advantage is you can kind of do what you want with it. So like, for instance, if I had on this ghost stuff, like background blue, like 400 or something, then by default, does it all have background blue 400? But I could come over here and let's see on this link, I could set like background transparent. And then all these, oh, what's going on now? Let's try this again. <laughs> so I could come in here and grab these classes and say background transparent. Transparent. And I think, I guess I should have checked that it was actually working. Uh, let's say background green like 200. Something I actually know exists. Okay, so that's not being passed in through. So maybe we need to double check that I'm actually using this properly. So what it should do is it should take in these are my normal ones. These are all the other ones I want to pass in afterwards. Oh, you know what? I need to move this after. So it's basically going to take the last thing you passed in, and that will be kind of the, the final word. So I, I do need to change those. So thanks for thanks for checking me on that. Let's go to heading and do the same thing. So these classes need to be after all this. And that way um, they get to kind of have the final word, if that makes sense. So good catch there, but yeah, that's how it works. And so it basically will override stuff. Whereas normally the way Tailwind works, it just depends on how it's compiled. So it tries to be smart about it, but it basically is gonna compile stuff in whatever order it's in. And then that will be the output at CSS and however it falls in the cascade, that's what will win. Um, so that's uh, that's the idea of the Tailwind merges. It smartly merges your classes, taking in the last thing you passed and overriding anything before. All right, um, let's see, any other questions? Uh, lead like the, or lead like the metal. I'm curious, did you ever have a problem loading custom fonts at Astro? I haven't been able to debug my blog, not loading fonts properly on mobile. It's just invisible. Huh, that's weird. Uh, not really, um, I haven't. Contrast ratio of the white might be rough on this, like here. Yeah, you, you might be right there. So maybe we just go like a, text plain text with like maybe I don't know 70% capacity something like that that might be a better idea um, I don't see anything else okay well I don't know I kind of feel like we should probably stop <laughs> while we're ahead um, but I, let's see is there one other quick little win I can get we did a lot of setup obviously so Maybe we do these top little sections, this and this, and maybe a quick nap bar. Here I am talking myself into more stuff. All right, so for anyone who wants to stick around, well, let's do a little bit more. So let's come inside here. I'm going to give myself, I'm going to set a little timer here. And uh, let's go five minutes for, for this whole top section, which might be a little ambitious, but we'll see. Okay, so above this section, um, we're eventually going to have a nav here, which will probably be our own little component. Then we're gonna have a hero component here. 
um, which we have yet to do. And then for here, maybe we'll just do like text for Excel or something to Excel. Um, and that's where we'll paste in all this. Text for Excel, font serif, font bold. Oh, you know what? That's the default for the site. Uh, text center, max width of pros. Isn't there something like that? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say this and it's gonna yell at me, but we'll come in here to hero, diastro. Um, let's pull this in. Let's reload once again. Okay, back over here. There we go. Oh, I thought I set a max width up in here. So max width large. MX, MX auto. All right, uh, the other thing I probably want to do is put all this stuff inside of some kind of main. Class would be grid, gap, maybe six. And obviously you'd want some kind of like actual system if you're gonna do this for reals, but do medium gap, like 20 maybe. Now wait, spaces this out from this. Maybe we can also set this to like 2XL, 3XL, I don't know. Share the love, it's pretty close. So we'll do something like that. Um, probably too big. Could be worse, could be better. Maybe we keep this at 4XL. Something like that. Yeah, and let's go back down to four for the width. Okay, so that's the top part. Um, we still have the, the hero section though. So let's open up the hero. And I don't know we're gonna have a whole lot up here. Well, I guess we are gonna pull on a button. So let's use some of those components we had. Um, so let's go ahead and close this off and we'll have seriously fun coffee. And the size will be H, probably H1. Tag type will be H1. What else do I have? Bolded, of course it's true already. Um, let's do like max width of small maybe. So let's come back in here to our heading. I don't think we've had anything really. Let's do three, four, five or six. Something like that. Uh, what else do I want to pass in here? Text center. That'll work. Let's take all this and um, I guess I'll put it in a header section. Class grid. Place items center, gap maybe six, small gap 12. Yeah, let's go 10, and leave it at that. Then here we need to pull in a link. That'll work. No, no, <laughs> header, okay. Um, this will say something, a value. What does that thing say? Shop now, okay. So let's say shop. Now, we need to pass in a couple things here. href, nowhere, style, square. And I think that's it. So let's open up that link. Let's see if we can do square. So we'll do border, I don't know, two. Uh, text, ah, uh, didn't quite finish it. Pine, accent. That was my timer that just went off. Um, so let's come back over here. It's gotta be pretty close. Okay, I feel okay about that. Uh, I mean, not that it's done, but 
uh, font uh, sans that we got enough done in that time. We'll do px6, py2, border text, or border pine accent. Probably should put those two things together. Yeah, I think that works. I um, guess the only other thing, shop now. I think that works. Um, let's go min height. Let's do an arbitrary value here. And that also means we need to do place content center. That'll work. And then What we should do is probably put this as container here. Now we don't have to declare it multiple times. I think that'll work. Okay, so we've got the background image here. And for here, import. That's right. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this in. I knew there was a way to do this. See, there's actually a function as well that comes with this that allows you to do more dynamic stuff like this. Um, so let's do that. And separate this out a little bit, components. And here we'll go hero background or something. Hero hands. And then we can just say style background image URL dot SRC. All right, something happened. It's thinking, so it's you can see it's like working on that. So that probably also means oh, it's kind of creepy. It's <laughs> just one hand. Um, there we go. So we probably also need to set this background object. Kind of like a. I guess you wouldn't do it on the object. It would be background image. Let's come over here and check it out. Background size, BG auto. Okay. Uh, like that. Oh yeah. How about that? How do I do background position stuff? BG center. Is there like a center center? It's just a center, okay. There we go, okay. Uh, that also means though that I can't put this container on the whole thing. So well, let's put it on all these sections, so class container. I could obviously wrap some of these as well, but I think I'll just do container on these as well. There we go. So it stretches the full width. Um, I guess I should actually do cover on this, huh? So background cover. Sure. Okay. So there we go. We've got that mostly loading properly. Um, should I attempt a nav bar? I mean, I'm already doing way more than I said I would. Shop all coffees. Let's do that next. Let's put off the decision. 
So let's come down here and we'll call this like CTA or something. CTA, there we go, okay. So let's go ahead and CTA this thing. Um, so we're gonna have shop ball coffee. This should be in each two. Ooh, and now we're gonna have some cool styling opportunities. So we've got variations of this button. So this is where you bring in something like, oh man, what is that thing called? Um, CTA NPM. Class ver or CVA, that's right. CVA NPM. Class Variance Authority. So this is a really cool um, little package that I've been wanting to do a video on. I've used it in a couple of, I don't know what's taking so long. It's by Joe Bell. Um, but basically it allows you to set out default styles and then different options. And you can, all of them, like they all get type safety. And I, it's, it's just a cool idea. Um, either way, let's call this section. I'm not sure why this thing isn't working. Hopefully I haven't lost my internet, in which case you're not hearing this anyhow, so. Okay, I think my internet's still working. Oh no. Maybe not. Well, let's keep going as if I am here. So we'll do ARIA labeled by, and or the other thing we can do is just do ARIA label and say that this is like by coffees or something. Okay, I'm back, I think. Can you still hear me, by the way? Because I think I lost the internet for some portion of that, but I think I'm still alive. So we're going to have a heading. Got to reload again. And we'll say shop all coffees. Class will be container, um, grid, place, items, center, like a gap six or something. This needs to be tag type of H2, tag. So we'll point to square. Square? Is that an option? Yeah. Shop now, like that. Okay, so. That's fine and well. Only trouble is, um, let's bump this up a touch. Sure, it's a little bit big, but uh, I don't know, maybe we should go in here to the heading. I just don't think we ever change these. Yeah, so let's get 2XL, small text, 3XL, medium text, 4XL. Sure, okay. Uh, now, because of this tail and merge, I should be able to come into the CTA here and pass in classes here of border text or border pine text. Yeah, and text pine text. So, yeah, now it just overrides those defaults. So, that's kind of cool. Um, I probably also want some kind of hover state on those. Um, don't talk and text at the same time, kids. <laughs> So let's come in here. Uh, let's do hover is uh, scale 105. Transition on the transform property. Loud and clear, still watching. Okay, good. That. I still have the default on those, so I should probably also 
mix it up a bit. If I've got these ring visible on everything, oops, then I should probably just add these so that they're all the same. I don't have to keep declaring that over and over again. And that way I get the same experience on all these two. Oops. Yeah, like that. That's good by me. Okay. That also means I can take off focus ring visible, all this kind of stuff here. Ring offset two. Okay, I think that should work. Scale transform. I mean, we just transition all two, I guess, for everything. Get rid of this. And this. They all have scale of this anyhow, or hover of this anyhow. So I guess I should get rid of that. Drop that in here too. So the class variance authority, which is what I was trying to show you a second ago, and it wasn't working. Um, oh man, it's really picked up in its usage. I, I bet there's a bunch of libraries using this or something. CV.style. It's a pretty cool idea. So what you do is... Um, you basically declare, you use the CVA function, you declare like some things that are true of everything, and then you have variants. So you have like your primary, your secondary, so these are different intents. So as you're clicking through it, you can basically choose, like I want my intent to be secondary, I want my whatever. So you're passing in an object that says, give me the intent of this, the size of this, and then you can combine them. I, there's just a lot of cool things. The defaults, you set those. So it just makes, for having like an actual like whole system of design just makes it really interesting. So I want to do a video at some point on those, but anyhow, just a, a thought there. Um, let's see. I actually added rounded here, which I did not want to do. So let's put this back on the ghost here. Okay. Should I do a nav? Now is the moment. Probably rather do now than do another one of these little things. So it's kind of two navs. There's a side nav and this nav. So let me let me make a compromise with myself. <laughs> Let's just do this. Uh, we'll drop this button in here and these in here. I don't like these icons, but so we'll maybe do our own. Um, okay, let's do that real real quick. Let's give ourselves ten minutes, which is going to be very ambitious. But when have we not been? So let's come in here and grab our nav, uh, which means I need to add a nav here, nav to Astro, and something will be in here. Reload again. That'll work. Um, So I think probably what I need to do is let's just set, you could import these, but I don't know. I kind of feel like I'd rather just have them right here. So that's what we'll do. So let's actually have the data for the nav right here title and we'll have like href. And maybe we set this to locations like that. And then let's just copy this down a bunch of times and quickly switch them out. So we'll do shop. And we'll do about us. Come on. Uh, wholesale. I have an extension that basically will keep things capitalized that are capitalized and um, make stuff not capitalized that were not capitalized. But it does not handle this kind of stuff. Quiz. All right, so that'll work. Let's shut this down. Let's import um, logo from assets images. I'm not sure why I have images there, but that's fine. Um, let's also, let's do PMPMI Astro icon. Get this in here. Maybe I'm around dev. 
Alright, and then... I think that's how it works. That way we can drop in some of those extra things there. So, we're going to have nav. It's going to be class of flex, justify between items center, gap, I don't know, two. Just make sure stuff is kind of separated. Then we'll have three sections. We're going to have the nav, um, like a, a div that'll have that nav bar section, although I guess we're not going to do that, are we? Uh, so, there'll just be this SVG right here. Then there'll be the logo mark. So let's do the image. And this will be SRC will be the logo. What else does this need? Alt. Alt. Logo mark for pine. There we go. Let's pass in a format, why not, Avif? Um, you don't have to pass in a width, I don't think. So let's leave it like that. And then the final section here will be a flux container, justify between, I guess. Um, well, let's justify end it. I don't know if that'll super matter, but items the center. And here we'll, I'll have three icons um, we'll say like um, const uh, nav icons or something like this and let's go ahead and just have an array where we choose something icons uh, chat chat and use the CVA oh yeah that's true. That's probably what it is. Icons can be assets too. They can be, but since there's this astro um, astro icon thing that will actually use SVGO, I don't know if the astro image thing does that. I think it mostly works with images, but I could be wrong. Either way, um, let's look at like maybe Radix. Eh. Let's do like Hero. What is that thing called? Hero? Yeah, so let's come in here and hamburger menu. What would they call that? Yeah, just like this. What is this thing called? Bars. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Bars three. <laughs> uh, solid. Let's come in here. Solid bars. That'll work. Okay, so now what I should be able to do, uh, let's kill these for just a second, just to make sure this thing is actually working. Let's do the icon. Oops. Um, and what is it? Name, I think. Can you paste that in? It should minify and pull in that. Okay, unless it doesn't want to. So it's, it's trying, which means it, it is working, but for some reason, zero icons are not working. So let's grab feather icons, let's see if this works. There we go, okay. Uh, so let's set a width of like, I don't know, 30 on here. Sure, that'll work, okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab other icons. We need a magnifying glass like an account person which disappears so an account a magnifying glass and a cart and I don't know which ones they're using so oops uh, account person I guess this is what we got that's fine so here's where we'll grab these and I'm just gonna I guess these should also be like this and technically like these should point somewhere so like I don't know. Name would be like. I guess it depends how. You, yeah. So let's do this. Let's for now. Let's point this to like account. And then this could be account or something like that. And then we could add that as like an aria label. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. 
Oh man, we got three minutes left. What am I doing? Um, <laughs> so let's come over here. Uh, Kurt. Sure. Um, what else would I have here? Uh, search, wasn't it? Not necessarily in that order. Okay, so now I should be able to loop through these nav icons. What's the matter with this? <laughs> what did I do here? Um, so let's pull this up here. This down here. Okay. So let's loop through these nav icons here. Nav icons. Dot map. The icon. And then we'll simply put out uh, icon name. Would be i. I dot icon. That's kind of confusing. Um, let's close this off. It at least shows up over there. Right? I guess I need a width on here. Let's do 40 as well. Okay, there you go. 30, I don't know. Not sure I love those icons either, but it is what it is at this point. Um, let's do an alt here. I guess technically these would be wrapped inside of a link component as well, right? And then I have a link here, and for some reason that link component does not want to play nice with this autocomplete. I'm not sure why that one doesn't like anything, but um, here we would actually have the href would point to the i.href, and then let's do an aria label since it doesn't have any text. And this will point to the i dot name or something, right? I guess we should do the label here. That makes more sense. And then let's change all these to label. And while we're at it, since I'm already going to not hit my time, let's change out this account for something else. Anything else. Uh, person. Um, it's like the definition of just spending time on <laughs> stuff that uh, yeah we, we missed our time for sure let's grab this and we'll do this here okay there we go I think that looks better than theirs maybe it's fine alright so let's close this down and finish off the top and then really we will be done. Link. What does it mean? Style is declared. Oh, style. Um, what are my options? Square around a ghost. Let's do ghost. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that we should probably have a gap of like two on here or something like that. Um, I'm kind of thinking for this. What's that relative here? I feel like this should be absolute and just in the very center no matter what. So we'll do left half, top zero. Something like that. Yeah, and then we'll translate x one half. Something like that. Let's also go back to the hero. Let's make this a little bit larger. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Oops, back to the nav. Let's also set this image. Make it a little bit smaller has to reprocess it, which is why it takes a little bit of time. 
and maybe we can now set this back to top zero. Something like that. Eh, it probably should be Well, we have it. Okay. So more or less, I mean, I've seen better, I've seen worse. Let's come to this index and kill this pine. We don't need that anymore. Oh, that's why I needed the extra. Okay, so now I can come up here um, and set this to top zero. I was wondering, I was like, the image itself must be off, but. All right, so more or less, um, that is set. I don't know, that kind of does look a little bit to the left, so maybe we should just leave it. All right, let's, last, last call. Let's get rid of this, set this in the middle. And I guess if we want to do something, we could say class uh, relative and then left like to eight. Obviously we're kind of playing with stuff at this point, but I think something like that works. The other thing is though, that this kind of seems below those, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and set these things to item start. That'll work. And then let's set PY to like two or something. Forty. Those are a little off there. Um, I guess we could just bump it like that and call it good. Um, let's also, can we set a container on this? Maybe just like PX6 max width. Actually, let's do this on the whole thing. So on the body, let's set a max width of like, I don't know, 2,000 pixels. And that way it can't ever get bigger than that. So if somebody has like an ultra wide screen, it won't break out of the bounds there. There's so many little things like that that you just kind of forget about. There we go. I mean, it could be better, could be worse, but I'm fairly happy with that overall. Well, maybe let's come back here and do like 250. Yeah. And then eventually one of those like disappears, I think. So we'd have to switch that around. But there's this scrolling feature here where it sticks to the top, which I should probably not try to do. Because um, this will basically, I guess this would be top zero. There you go. Um, but as I'm not doing this, since that's what I'm definitely not doing right now, uh, we are kind of doing it. Um, but <laughs> the other thing I need to do is, I think I need to take all this. And I need to wrap all this stuff because we're gonna have a lower section here too, right? So class, paste all that back in there. So that should all work the same. And then the lower section are these location things. So we need to do that at least. So let's set down here, a flex, uh, flex. Actually, we don't need to wrap it because we'll probably just make it disappear on desktop. Um, so we do items center. Justify center. I guess we should do like a gap of two or something. And then nav items dot map. The item here will also have a link. No. That. And for each of these, I'll have an href. And then style the ghost or I guess we can make the style link we'll have to create a new one and then inside here we'll have I dot title okay, 
So that's there. The other thing we'll do is set this to grid gap two. Let's see, this is here. Oh, I put it inside it. Like that. Okay, that should work. So let's come over to our link component and we'll create another one called link. This will be text of sans. Style link, right? Style link. Font sans. Okay. Um, what do these look like? These are definitely spaced out. So what is that, kerning? Uh, what is that stuff called? Letter spacing tracking. I, I I never remember what those things are supposed to be called. I guess that's what happens when you don't have a design background wider. Widest. I, mean, I think that's what they have, but it looks dumb. So let's not do that. Allocations. I think that works. Um, what else do they have? So when you hover. So we could do this in a couple ways. I think kind of border bottom two. This makes sense to me to do something like this. Uh, border. Yeah, I think I think I like that. Um, text. Pine text, I think. Yeah. And then what we'll do is uh, do this again, except we'll call this transparent and have this show up on hover. Yeah. Okay, that's all we'll do. Um, the other thing I should probably do is pass in Okay, so you can also overwrite some of these. So let's set the hover to scale of 100. That way it doesn't actually scale up, it just does this. Nav over here, more like gap six. And then we're gonna actually have this hidden and just show this on small and above. That way when it's real small, it won't be there. Around there, it will show. Look at that. It should take us to all these places that don't exist. Okay. I think all that is good. Um, eh, really want to do some JavaScript, so maybe... <laughs> I swear, if anyone is even still watching, <laughs> congratulations for taking a large portion of your day to watch me waffle for an hour about whether or not I'm going to stop streaming. Uh, you need to give width and height to some of the icon packs. Yeah, I think so. I think I did that. Um, super great to see more Astro content. Yeah, I love I love Astro. Uh, let's come back to my nav. Just to make sure I did give. Yeah, I gave width here and here. So I think that'll all work. Okay. So the other thing I, I want to do is set. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's have it to where there's like this banner thing. So we probably need to put in the banner just to make sure that we can use it, uh, use the nav for an intersection observer to to hide that thing. So this is totally uh, bonus. Um, and I'm definitely not working more on this, but let's do background or class here, background, um, pine accent. Yeah, there we go. Do font serif or sans text, maybe small. Not normal. Um, yeah, I think that works. <clears throat> Let's just do text center. PX4, PY2. Something like that. Okay, so now that we've got that there.
That'll work. Now we go three. Anyhow, it's not a huge deal. All right. Let's. Oh, it's just because they're spaced out weirdly. Well. <clears throat> I guess we, we can always. Oops. Let's put this in a span. the width I don't know we just do padding X eight or something there we go okay not sure where they did that but I guess don't question it we'll do it on small okay so with that said what we want to do is listen for the intersection of this nav and what we want or of this banner so let's give this some kind of class so we'll do an ID of like banner and let's go ahead and just do this all in line here, which it will automatically be declared as a module and moved up and all this kind of stuff. So let's grab this ID of banner, const banner equals document dot query selector. And we're gonna do an ID of banner, um, banner dot or const banner observer be new intersection observer. Uh, this takes a callback, what to do, and then also some options. So we can just write this in line like this. And then I don't know if we're going to have any options. So for now, we'll just leave it like that as well. Um, what I want to do is banner.observe. Nope. Banner OBS dot observe. And I want to observe the banner. Okay, so when the banner... Um, Uh, HTML paragraph. There we go. All right, now it'll stop yelling at me. <laughs> That's just TypeScript. But um, so we're gonna take in the the items here, and let's just um, I think console.log the banner. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up in console ninja just to make it a little easier to whoop, <laughs> to view. Okay, so you can see how we get the target here and whether or not it's it's interacting. So it is intersecting. So I wanna do is see if it's not intersecting. So let's say uh, const is intersecting um, would be the banner.element being at the target, right? Because the banner is the actual intersection observer entry. Dot target. Nope. Dot is intersecting. Yeah. So let's just double check that I'm getting what I think I am. What? All right, let's come back out here. The banner is the actual observable entry, right? And I just want the entries that is intersecting. What am I doing wrong here? Intersection observer. Callback options is intersecting. Entry, entry dot is intersecting. That's literally what I'm doing. Do I have to loop over them? Oh, you know what? Because it's an array of items. Yeah, okay. So um, let's just call them entries. Dot for each entry there we go ok 
Okay, I'm actually getting autocomplete too, so. So, what I want to know is if it is intersecting. Oops. So, shouldn't it tell me that? All right, I, I'm not console logging it anymore. There we go. All right, <laughs> now I am. So, true, true. False is when I come down here, right? So right here, it's gonna fire false. So when it fires false, okay, <laughs> that's what I wanna do. When it fires false, I wanna do a couple things. Let's come back over here. As soon as it fires false, I wanna hide this by fading it out. So I think I wanna do that in a couple, of, well, I guess we could just do it real simply. So we should add um, an ID of like nav links or something here. Uh, I also wanna add an ID of logo mark and we're going to grab both of these so let's grab both of these nav links nav links and this will be html div element and then logo mark will be a logo mark as html image element all right and then what we're going to do is grab these nav links and say that if it is intersecting um yeah so let's do a little switch um all right i guess we could just do if statement so if is intersecting then i'm just going to go ahead and return or yeah let's do this let's um we'll return it here all right it doesn't matter i guess because what these are both going to be guarded by these if uh, loop. So let's just say that nav links dot class list dot add dot remove. Yeah. What am I doing? Dot remove um, opacity zero. I'm just trying to think how I want to do this. Because um, I want to fade that off. Can I do visibility? None. Let's try it. Um, and if it is not intersecting, then I want to add that. So let's see what see what happens. All right. Well, <laughs> we killed we killed it all. Oh no, it was on small. Okay, so it's adding, let's just double check, it's actually adding what we want, and then visibility num might not be the way to do it with tail, and I forget what the, the class is there. Come on. All right, right here. Nothing is happening. Awesome. Well, it's because I have to... Nav links. Let's just double check, is this the right thing? Yeah, all right. Hidden. Nope, not the right thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, this should go here. Yeah, let's try again. Okay, yeah, so here it's getting visibility none. So let's check visibility here. Visibility, invisible. Okay, that's what I need. So let's add this right here. I think you can transition on this. So it should still take up. Yeah, so see how it just disappears like that? Um, so I should be able to come up here and transition all. Can I can I transition on the invisibility property? Eh, not really. Okay, so <laughs> maybe we just do like opacity which this is probably not the right way to do it because then they're still visible, which I don't know if that would be a problem. Yeah, so they, they disappear right then, which is what I want. Okay, perfect. Other thing I want to do, and then we really will be done, will be take my logo mark, dot class list, dot add and remove at the same time, scale like 50 or something. And here we would remove it. So now I just need to add a transition. 
transition of transform. Look at that. Uh, maybe I take the duration up a bit. I don't know, 700 or something. Kind of sl slides down. There we go. Um, let's see, I would also probably self self start or something line self start I want this at the top align self self start all right oh man I don't know how late it got okay well, that's what happens when you never give up, I guess. <laughs> so, um, this should also, maybe we could do is add one more. Cause this kind of hides itself too, right? Like it, can I, I can't really transition on that. I was gonna say what I could do is transition on like the height zero or something but I don't think I can transition on that how about that for funky so it's not sure what to do in that like little <laughs> intervening zone so it just shakes wildly okay so for right now we're just not going to worry about that I guess we could do like hidden or something and then we would lose our fading animation what do we Maybe slightly, I don't know. I think you can pass like a, maybe an array. Is that is that how you do that? I forget. No. I think it's just a list like this, a comma separated list. You know, that may not be totally correct, but something like that. Anyhow, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, obviously, there's a lot left to do on this site, but... I think that's probably all I will do on it just because I think this is not the kind of thing you'd come and watch a part two on, but we got to explore a lot of fun Astro things. What I'll probably do is just like mark on here to not keep any of my images and instead just like put up all the code without images and without the font. And if you want to follow along, you can grab those yourself and just name them the same things that I did and, and yeah, all that. But I hope that was at least helpful for you and that you enjoyed that. Um, but uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that as well. So. All right, well, it is time for me to go, so hopefully you enjoyed today. A lot of fun to play around with Astro and build out these components and appreciate all the interaction as well. That always makes it way more enjoyable when I don't feel like I'm just by myself. But hey, Matthew, thanks so much. Thanks for following along. All right, well, with that said, I am going to take off, and uh, thanks again for watching. I will catch you in the next video.